Hello there, it's Graciela here. In a previous video, we talked about using Power Automate and the Graph API to get the content of an attachment in a nested email. By nested email, we mean an email that we receive that the attachment is another email and the actual file we're interested in is inside that second email that is attached to the first email we got. However, this previous approach that we presented relies on Power Automate being able to recognize the .eml file as an actual attachment. However, there are some instances, depending on how the email is attached, it may be that Power Automate will not be able to recognize anything, and the attachments will be empty even if the file is present there. Because what's really going on is that for some reason, some attachments will be recognized as item attachments and not file attachments. So this issue, when Power Automate is not able to recognize the attachments, this will be a totally empty array, will happen when the email, the attached email, is recognized as an item attachment and not as a file attachment. So today we're going to be working with that and showing you how to use the Graph API to get the file of that attachment. So in this case, we're going to be working with this example because this one is recognized by Power Automate and the Graph API as an item attachment. So this is the perfect example for this scenario in which the previous approach would not work. Okay, so let's start by going to Power Automate and creating an automated cloud flow. Here we're going to select the regular trigger, which is when an email arrives and then assign a name. Then let's hit on create and I will switch to the classic designer. And once this is ready, we are just going to set up the trigger to recognize the emails that start with this text. So I'm just going to copy and paste it on the subject filter. So, so then let's just hit on new step. And here we are going to be searching for HTTP. What we need to select is this send an HTTP request action from the Office 365 Outlook connector. What this action does is just connect into the Graph API with custom requests that we usually don't find in the regular Outlook connector. So this is really useful if something doesn't work out of the box in Power Automate. So here what we need to do is leave the method as, as get, content type will stay as application JSON, and then we are going to write this text and after messages, we are going to be selecting the message ID. Let's just search for ID and grab the message ID from the trigger. And after the message ID, we are going to extract the attachments because that's what, that's what we're interested in. And finally, we are going to be adding some strings at the end to get the item attachment details. So what we are, what we are doing here is using the graph API first to extract the full list of attachments, regardless if they are an item attachment or a file attachment. And then we are adding these parameters at the end to indicate that we want to extract all the details of the item attachments. What this will do is give us the name and the content, and then we can use that in Power Automate to just create a file in SharePoint. So for now, let's hit on save and see how this result will look. Let's uh, go ahead and test and send an email to ourselves to see this working. Okay, so now it has run. So let's go ahead and see what the HTTP request from the Graph API looks like. Just going to click here on show row outputs. And the first thing we're going to notice is that here the attachment we have, this .eml file is an item attachment and not a file attachment like the other type we were working with in the previous video. So right after we know this, we know that the actual item all the details are here. We can see what's the subject of that second email, which is the same one that we have here, as you can see. And then we have some other details about the attachment. And then the final thing that we have is the actual attachment data, because you, we have this file, we, we have the attachment here, and inside that we have a PDF. So that PDF information is what we see in the attachments section of the item details. So here we have, for example, what's the content type, what's the name, and we also have the actual content of the file. So what we need to do is just extract the value of the result and then go to the item. And then after the item, grab the first item of the attachment and then just grab the content byte and, we, 
And after that, we will be able to create the file in SharePoint and extract the content of this attachment. So let's just go back to edit. And what we are going to be doing is adding a new step and let's select the control. And here we are going to be using the apply to each. What we need to do is just extract the value attribute of the body. So I'm just going to select body here and I am going to copy this text and in a notepad or any text editor, I am going to paste this and then write the question mark and then square brackets. And then in single quotes, we are going to write the word value, which is the same word that we have here. So we can extract the contents of this. So I will copy this and then paste it here. Right after that, I am going to just add a create file action from SharePoint. And I'm going to select the SharePoint site that I want to save my file into. And then the path. And for the file name and file content, we know that that is present here in the attachment section. We know that that's the first item that we have in the attachments. Here's the name and here's the actual content of the file. And we know that this attachment attribute is under the item attribute. So after extracting the value and then we know we, know we are looping through it, then we need, we need to get to the item and inside item, we need to get to attachments and inside attachments, we need to get to the first element. So to do that, I am just going to select here on the file name, then go to the very end and select current item. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in my notepad. And as we have seen to go through each of the attributes or to access to each of them, what we need to do is to just write a question mark and then in between square brackets, we write the name of the attribute we want to access. So in this case, we just accessed item and inside item, we want to go to attachments. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. Now that we have accessed or reached attachments, what we want to do is to extract the first one because we know that this file only will have a single attachment. In this case, that's my PDF file that I have here. So after that, after we have reached the first element, we are going to just extract the attribute name that we are interested in. So in that case, let's just copy this and paste it right after the first function. And then here we are going to access the name. We are going to be doing a similar thing for the content bytes. So I'm just going to grab this and to copy this and paste it here. Now we are ready to just grab the name of the attachment and paste it in the file name. But for the file content, we cannot do exactly that because SharePoint expects binary format to be able to create a file into this platform. And the content byte that we are reading here is in base 64. So we need to convert this base 64 into binary. And there's a, a formula in Power Automate that we can use for that. So I'm just going to copy my code without including the curly bracket and the at. And then I will go to the file content field. And then in expression, I will write base 64 to binary then open and close parentheses and in the middle of that just paste my code after that i will just hit ok and then hit on save once our workflow is saved i can just go back and then resubmit and it seems like it worked properly so let's go to our sharepoint folder and we can see that our file is here and it was successfully created and we were able to successfully recognize this attachment, even though the power automate trigger or the get attachments out of the box action doesn't work. We can use the graph API and this sent an HTTP request from the Outlook connector is pretty useful because we can work around many of the things we cannot do with the regular actions. That's it for now. We hope that this was useful for you. See you next time.